Welcome to Outback Outdoors. Make sure you like, subscribe, and click the alert to stay up to date on all our new videos. What does effective, your effective range mean? That's what we're gonna get into. And all of this is gonna be dictate whether or not I follow through on that shot or I don't, okay? I'm not here to preach at you, understand that, okay? But what I do wanna encourage you is to be honest with yourself. If you're honest with yourself and you follow this methodology, the answer will be plain. And you'll have the answer before you get into the situation. That's what I like about this idea. Let me stop and caveat something real quick. Just like an athlete who stands on the Olympic podium and gets the medal put around his, around his neck, that really should go to the coaches and the team that helped him get there in a lot of ways. I, this is, I didn't make this up. I learned this from other people, and primarily a lot of it from my good friend Phil Mendoza at No Limits Archery, who created the Alpha Bow Hunting methodology. And so all of this stuff that I'm gonna talk about, you can find, and you can actually use some of these things. It's really, it's really cool, okay? But I don't want you to think I made this up, because I didn't. I mean, we all learn something, right? And you hope to take little pieces and apply it. So the first thing we're gonna do is discovering our effective range we have to deal with, you said pie plate. We're gonna call it animal vitals, size. And then we're gonna begin what we call the alpha rule of thirds. The one thing that I know successful bow hunters do is they evaluate themselves honestly and they make changes in their setup and in their, the way they do. I know guys that are tearing their bows down right a week before season and revamping them trying to get them just right. I can't do that because unfortunately I'm not that technical. I get where I'm pretty comfortable and I shoot that bow a lot, okay? That increases. But let's talk about vital size. If you see this picture, you'll see that an elk is approximately 27 to 28 inches wide. Could we all agree with that? As far as the depth of the body cavity. But you see these X's, these are no-go areas. We don't want to hit them there with, a, with an arrow. We want to be inside of that pie plate. Well, actually, it's a, little, I like to, it's a little smaller than a pie plate because if you look at the 14 to 15 inches, if we adjust, and then we adjust for this shoulder. Has anybody ever shot an elk in the shoulder? I have. It wasn't so good. The elk was breeding cows three days later. Yeah, he had a little bit of a limp, but he lived. A buddy of mine shot him three years later, broadhead still in his shoulder. They're tough animals. I want to stay away from that shoulder. So let's adjust this to a nine inch, nine inch vital area. Can we all agree that's a pretty consistent, again for elk, that's pretty consistent. Mule deer. Well, I'm going to adjust that down to eight inches. Again, our body cavity's not that 27, 28, it's probably 24. So if you take all factors, now we have an eight inch adjusted vital range. An antelope, well, we're gonna go even smaller. Okay, so let's say that's a five inch adjusted. But here's what I wanna talk about. I don't do different sizes. I, I go with seven inches. Whether I'm hunting elk, whether I, I'm gonna hunt antelope, whatever, I just go with seven inches. That way, when I'm setting my target system up of what I'm gonna go through here in a second, that's what I'm looking at, okay? Just gives you a, a pretty good median. So, let's, let's have the rubber meets the road. Our bow, we've got our bow dialed, it's, it's pretty tuned, and now we're gonna start to, to field test and start the process of finding out where is our effective range. Question. How many arrows should a bow hunter shoot when determining their effective range? Anyone? One. One. Have you been to my seminar before? A lot of people will say three, five, right? But you're right. It's, it's, it's one arrow. Why? Because you have one arrow. Getting back to the honesty that we have to have as bow hunters, what is our effective range? 
Where am I gonna say, no, I'm not gonna shoot, yes, I am gonna shoot? If I'm not honest with myself, I'm not doing that animal any service. I, it might work out a little bit, but then the other times, you're gonna feel like garbage. At least I do. So we're gonna go with one arrow. So with the one arrow, we have here on our left our elk. Again, a mule deer is eight inches. Again, I'm gonna say seven. What seven gives me is a median range, okay? Understand this. Is it the same when I'm at my house and I'm shooting 60 yards on flat ground without a stitch of wind? My wife just made a delicious dinner. I'm happy, I'm calm, I'm cool and collected, and I'm just pinwheeling them at 60 yards. Is that my effective range? Under those conditions, perhaps. But we're gonna do away with that and we're gonna start testing us on some other ways so we can determine our real effective range under certain conditions. So, here is, again, I didn't come up with this. This, this came from the alpha bull hunting uh, methodology. Here is a good way to start. If we're gonna shoot one arrow, we're gonna shoot one arrow at, one, at each distance. So I'm gonna start at 20, then I'm gonna move back to 25, and then I'm gonna move back to 30. I wanna take a second though. You notice I have arrowed my numbers, my arrows have numbers on them. So if I'm shooting six arrows, I number them one, two, three, four, five, six. Why do you think I do that? Because sometimes my arrows need tuning. Sometimes it's not always me. It's not always my bow. It's not always whatever. Sometimes it's the pro projectile that I'm shooting down range that needs to be tuned. This is a great way, when I see this arrow number three that keeps doing up and to the right, way out of the other group, I can set that aside now and, and address that. Because we're trying to maintain consistency. Consistency and honesty gives us proper feedback and data for any of you engineers out there that we can then extrapolate and make changes because that's how we become better. So you'll see I'm, I'm out here, one, one inch. I'm making notes um, with all of the arrows. Where do I get out of my effective range? Well, it determines, determines what I'm shooting at. For me, seven inches, a seven inch circle, that would be three and a, and a half, right? I'm still there, but when I went back to 55, guess what, I got out. I came out of that. So now I have to go, oh, under those conditions, my effective range was 50. But yesterday, I shot at 75, and I was hitting an apple, okay? Good for you. Hopefully you can get those exact conditions in hunting situations. It's not, not real, it's not real, okay? So we're, we're building this, but by logging it down, I keep a notebook with me, by logging it down, I'm able to start to see patterns develop, not only in my setup, but in my shooting, in the conditions. Thanks for watching Outback Outdoors. We encourage you to comment below, and as always, like, subscribe, and click the alert to stay up to date on all our new videos.